Hi, brave time travelers. I'm Courtney, and today, let's set our time machines for the year 1972 in China. This is the year Chinese archaeologists made an unbelievable discovery at Ma Wangdui near Changsha in Hunan province. They found three large underground tombs belonging to members of a wealthy family who lived over 2,000 years ago. One of the tombs, which looks something like an underground log cabin with five rooms, was so well preserved, even the body of the tomb occupant looked like it had been mummified. This was the tomb of a woman named Xin Jue, who lived during the powerful Han Dynasty. She died in the year 168 BCE and is commonly called by her nickname Lady Dai. She is called Lady Dai because her husband was the Marquis of Dai, a small territory in South China under control of the Han Imperial Dynasty. Lady Dai's tomb was filled with hundreds of incredible objects for her spirit to use in the afterlife. The ancient Chinese believed that after death, a spirit or a soul could live on in the tomb. Lady Dai's relatives packed all of her beautiful red and black colored dishware, her makeup kit, and many other belongings Lady Dai cherished in her lifetime into her tomb for her spirit to enjoy in the afterlife. Along with Lady Dai's belongings, there were also objects in the tomb that were made specifically for her burial, like her gorgeous lacquered wood coffins and one of the earliest silk paintings in Chinese history. Today, let's focus on the silk painting discovered in Lady Dai's tomb. This silk painting was originally a banner that was held upright on a pole, probably during Lady Dai's funeral procession. We think this because the tomb had an inventory written on bamboo slips listing all the items in the tomb. We learn from this list of things that the silk painting was called a fei yi in Chinese, which means flying cloth. The flying cloth, or let's call it a banner, was found in an interesting location in the tomb. As I mentioned earlier, the tomb had five rooms, one at the center and one on each side. Lady Di was buried in the central room in four nesting coffins, kind of like a nesting doll. Three of her coffins were painted with colored lacquer, a substance derived from lac trees, and the outer one looked like a plain wooden box. The silk banner, which is in the shape of a capital T, was found draped face down over the top of her innermost coffin. The painting depicts a narrative, which means it tells a story. The narrative is organized vertically from bottom to top in sections. And guess what? The main character is Lady Di. The painting shows her journey from the earthly world and her funeral to the celestial world of the immortals above. Let's start with her funeral at the bottom of the painting. Notice how below this scene there is a figure with a big belly standing on two intertwining fish-like creatures holding the funeral scene up with all his might. In the funeral scene, guests have gathered to either side of a table. There are vessels laid out on the table and in front of all the guests. Lady Di's tomb had lots of food and drinking vessels, so these probably represent the ones that were used at her funeral that were then placed in her tomb for the afterlife. Under the table, there's a loaf-shaped object decorated with a pattern. You might be surprised to find out that this is Lady Di's body, wrapped up in silks, prepared for burial. As we move up to the next scene in the painting, we see a woman hunched over a cane wearing a silk robe that has the same pattern seen on the silk bundle in the funeral scene below. Here, we see Lady Di's spirit making her way to the afterlife. Notice how she is larger than the other figures. This is called hierarchic scale. Artists use hierarchic scale to show who the most important person or character is in a visual narrative. Three female attendants stand behind Lady Di and she is greeted by two male figures who kneel down in front of her. These figures might be her husband and son who died before her, or perhaps they are messengers from the celestial world there to guide her on the rest of her journey. Now, let's move on to the top of the silk painting where we see a raven in the sun, a toad on the moon, dragons, and other mythological creatures. 
This scene represents the celestial world of the immortals, Lady Di's destination. There's a lot going on here, including a depiction of what may have been one of Lady Di's favorite stories, the story of the hero Archer E and his wife Chang E. The story of Archer E is symbolized by the nine orange orbs on the right side. One of the orange orbs has a raven in the middle, while the others float between a dragon and the arms of a writhing vine below. The orbs represent the nine hot suns the archer E shot down through the branches of a mulberry tree when, one day, ten suns arose in the sky at once, and the earth got way too hot. Archer E saved the day, and the emperor awarded him with an elixir of immortality, which is kind of like a potion that could make him live forever. However, his wife, Chang E, stole the elixir before he could take it, and she fled to the moon. On the left side of the painting, you can see Chang E riding on the back of a dragon, nestled in a dragon's wing. She's flying towards the moon with a special elixir. In one version of Chang E's story, she was punished for stealing the elixir and turned into a toad forever destined to live on the moon. On Lady Di's painting, you can see a big toad just above the crescent moon. There's also a rabbit that leaps over the toad's head. The rabbit is associated with the legend of Chang E. In some version of Chang E's legend, the rabbit is her companion. Finally, at the top of the banner, in between the sun and moon, there's a woman who looks like she is half human and half snake. She might be Nu Hua. An important goddess of creation in Chinese mythology, but some think this might be Lady Di transformed into a mythical goddess in the celestial world. Lady Di's banner is an extraordinary example of how artists use visual images to tell stories. It was made specifically for Lady Di and then placed in one of the most intimate places in her tomb, draped over the innermost coffin she was buried in. We think it might have functioned as a guideway or a map. To remind Lady Di of her destination in the afterlife in the world of the immortals. That's all for today, travelers. I hope the next time you look up to the moon, you'll think of Lady Di and the story of Archer E and Chang E. Maybe you'll even notice a rabbit grinding herbs for the elixir of immortality, or see a toad leaping over the crescent moon.